Don is the ultimate gym rat. And he's not doing it for the paycheck. He's doing it for the love of the game. He is tenacious. He, he, he has a problem with the losing. When you see him, he doesn't look like a basketball player. I have the greatest respect for him. I see him away from the court. Love him. Great guy. But he was a dirty basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> John Houston Stockton, born March 26, 1962. When you hear the name John Stockton, you're naturally at ease in any situation because the name doesn't strike you as someone threatening. Equally, when you see him, non-threatening remains the feeling. But on the floor, that name completely deceives you and can take advantage of any opponent that doesn't take him seriously. You heard all the voices of how many of his pairs think about him, and they collectively paint the perfect picture of all you need to know about his character. Growing up as a basketball player, looking to learn from whomever could teach me the most, I've always checked for Stockton to maybe emulate his fundamentals and learn how to be respected as a professional. He's in the Basketball Hall of Fame and there's no question of his worthiness from someone that's seen him compete and understands the context of his career. That said, not everyone's as high on John the way I am and a lot of it came because he didn't win a championship and he doesn't have a controversial storyline that creates intrigue. So who's right about him? He's a 10-time NBA All-Star, 2-time All-NBA First Team, six-time All-NBA second team, and even won an All-Star Game MVP. He led the NBA in assists nine times, steals twice, and a 50th anniversary top 50 player of all time. So could John Stockton have been a better player? He's made the conference finals five times and the NBA finals in back-to-back -back seasons in the 90s. What's most impressive is his durability. He's played 19 seasons and played all 82 17 times. That's unparalleled to me. He retired as the all-time leader in assists and steals, and it's not even close. Yet still, his career fell short of the ultimate goal, and although he personified the duties of a point guard and his name should be first when best point guards are mentioned, it's not. Why isn't John Stockton considered the best point guard of all time? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. John Stockton was born and raised in the same neighborhood in Spokane, Washington as his father. A suburban kid that got his competitive instincts growing up wanting to beat his older brother by four years at anything. His family structure gave him strong guidelines and also the freedom to express his frustrations as he made his way through the beginnings of his basketball journey. His passing nature was developed through always playing with the older boys so he had to make sure he got them the ball. He became a starter for Gonzaga Prep his sophomore season and by his senior season he led the team in scoring and steals. Yet, he wasn't highly recruited by Division I schools. One school he did have was Gonzaga, who he grew up dreaming of playing for. He went from just 9 minutes a game to 39 from his freshman to sophomore season and was an impact since then. By his senior year, he had upped his averages every season, ending that year at 20.9 points a game and 7 assists. He was the conference player of the year and eventually had his number retired by Gonzaga. Stunt number one, because he didn't win. The most obvious reason Stockton isn't the number one choice as best point guard ever was that simple. With a championship or two, I have no doubt the majority would have him at the top of the list. After being taken with the 16th pick in the 1984 NBA Draft to be a backup to former All-Star Ricky Green, he was second on the team to Green as a rookie, 7-5 in assists, playing 13 minutes less. The following season, with nearly equal minutes to Ricky, Stockton led the team in that category and never looked back on his way to the NBA history book. By his fourth year, he was named the starter and averaged an insane 13.8 assists per game, leading the NBA. The next year, much of the same, except he was now a first-time All-Star. 
What followed in the 89-90 season was Stockton establishing himself as the best true point guard in the league with career-high assist totals almost reaching his points per game and again another all-star selection. But the Jazz continued to be disappointed, only making it as far as the second round each of his seasons, even with having one of the league's best power forwards and automatic double-double guy on his team. He continued to dominate the position in the late 80s individually, and in 91-92, Utah got its first taste of playoff success, making it to the conference finals, where they were defeated by the Blazers. Stockton shot 40% from three for the second time in his career by then and had his fifth straight season averaging at least 13 assists a game. In 93-94, they'd make the conference finals again and for the second time were eliminated right before getting over the hump. The hump was finally conquered in 96-97, the year after losing for a third time in the conference finals. In the 97 playoffs, the Utah Jazz met none other than Michael Jordan and the Bulls, who took care of Utah easily, winning four games to two. Stockton averaged 15 points and almost nine assists per, shooting 40% from three. What would happen in 97-98? Well, a finals rematch that ended the same. As Jordan showed his greatness, Stockton's numbers were horrible compared to his standards at 9.7 points, 8.7 assists, and shooting just 22% from three. He was 35 at that point. From 98-99, Utah, with Stockton at point guard, would only make the semifinals twice in John's final five seasons. Winning is one of the benchmarks of greatness. Because Stockton found himself in a golden era, dominated by the best player and some of the best teams ever, he didn't win a coveted championship and it caused him to slip from where he should be when you mention the best point guards ever. Stunt number two, lack of an alpha. Another reason the Utah Jazz as a team didn't win throughout Stockton's time at point guard was because the team was never feared or intimidating enough to go grab their championship. They had Stockton and Malone as their leaders and Jeff Hornacek right behind. All passive personalities that were system guys that were better off soldiers than generals. In the late 80s and 90s, it was tough to compete for a championship in the NBA. Add to that, there's this crazy, obsessed with winning alpha dog of all alpha dogs constantly standing in the way of every team and their best players. Now don't get me wrong, alpha personalities don't always win championships. Ask Charles Barkley or Gary Payton before he decided to ring chase. But once again, Jordan. No matter your personality, Jordan. Still, I think because of their follow the plays, nice guys aura, the Jazz, Stockton and Malone were never going to be anything more than a really good team that plays the right way and follows their methodical system to a T instead of putting their feet down when they did get their back-to-back -back chances in the finals. An alpha picks up his team when the chips are down, he demands the best of his teammates and knows when to take over physically or mentally. The entire season, he carries that aura of no one's going to beat me. Carl Malone and John Stockton were nice, suburban guys, happy to be there. I'm very excited. I'm very thankful. Uh, it definitely makes me feel good. It's, uh, I hope that I can help the team out as much as they think I'm going to. Stunt number three, ran out of time. The final reason I think Stockton is not revered as the best point guard ever is because his window of opportunity to do so had closed. That window, of course, was very small in Stockton's prime, as in just two seasons where he had the opportunity. Yes, I'm talking about 93-94 and 94-95, the year Michael Jordan retired to play baseball and his first year back shaking off the rust. With MJ and Stockton having the same prime years, there was no escaping the fact those were his best chances to the throne. When the king is distracted or unsettled. The Houston Rockets won back-to-back -back championships in that span and the Jazz settled for a conference finals and an early first round exit. 
Beginning in 96-97, as mentioned, they lost to Chicago 4-2 back-to-back years. Stockton was 35 and passed his prime. He did make an all-star team in 99-2000 when he was far past the player he was and his chances to solidify himself as the best ever. All in all, John Stockton can still call himself the best true point guard as he holds the record for most assists averaged in a season at 14.5 and of course having the most dimes of all time. Along with the other league-leading stats, he's right up there and should be remembered as one of the best to ever do it, even if he looks like he sells vacuum cleaners door-to-door to old widows. Salute to John, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.